In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the fast charging option on the AC500. I have two of these units and I'm gonna connect them together and charge it at 50 amps. Now you can't just plug these in and put it into a 50 amp plug and expect it to work. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. Show you that there are a couple things you could do and it would be wrong and it won't work. So try to avoid those things and get you on the right track of doing your fast charging. Also, I've charged some solar. I'll show you a trick that I've, I've learned when you only have you know, one array coming in, but you need to charge two units. I'll show you how I do that. Um, just different things that you might find useful about the AC500 and getting it charged up. And you'll notice that this one is at 8% state of charge and this one's at 5% state of charge. This one's currently powering the integration kit that is powering the shop that I'm doing this video in. And we're gonna plug it to this 50 amp plug that did come with the integration kit. I have a video on that showing everything that you need to connect these two together and it will include these cables here. So if you want to check that out, I'll put a link in the up right hand corner here so you can see that. But I need to get these connected because I don't want this one to run out of battery on me. The first thing that you want to hook up is your communication interface. There's a port on each side of these units. So you'll take the cable and get it plugged into the port. Now this will only go in one way because we have different notches right here. So you just kind of rotate it until you feel it slide in the spot and then tighten it down. and then do the same thing on the other unit. And next is our charging cable. Don't plug this in to your outlet until you have these connected into the AC 500s. The way that I do it is I put AC one into the unit that I'm gonna designate as the master unit. And then we'll designate the other one as the slave unit. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Now this can be hooked in incorrectly. And I'm gonna show you what you're gonna look for on the cable. There's a little arrow right here. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but there's an arrow. This needs to be facing up. I'll show you. We could put that in like that right there. It goes in, we can screw this down and tighten it down. However, you can come in here and put this in incorrectly. And I'll forget exactly where it's at. So you can push it in the spot, it must be the other way. So see, it's going into spot and you wouldn't want to do that. Although it feels tight and you would think that on a 50 amp uh, connection that it would be tight. It needs to slide in effortlessly. So that way you know you got it right. So arrow at the top, put it in, tighten it down. I'm not a real big fan of these screw in connectors. I've mentioned that before. Blue Eddie is changing over to a push in connector on their smaller power stations, but I'm not sure if that would work on these bigger power stations. Arrow at the top, lift. You'll see a white dot at the top as well. So arrow to the white dot, push it in, tighten down. And before we connect it to our 50 amp outlet, we wanna designate this as the master unit and this as the slave unit in split phase. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. First, I'm gonna disconnect anything AC I've already transferred that back to the grid, so we have nothing coming out of this. We need to turn off the AC outlets on both of these units. And then we'll go to settings on the one that you want master. Go over one click, you'll hit machine type, single phase, you'll change that to split phase. You're gonna get some alarms that go off. All right, the cost of communication port's hooked up. We're getting an alarm over on this one as well, but. That's okay, that's what's supposed to happen. We're gonna change that from single phase to split phase as well. We're gonna make sure that's slave. Hit the X button on that one. Now we have split phase there. Hit the X on that one, we have split phase here. The alarms will go away in just a second. Now we'll go back. You'll see that that still has one. We'll go back here. Still has the alarms kind of going off. When the communication between the two pair up, the alarms go off. So you'll see that we're having a communication error. Now those alarms went off. We'll go back. You don't hear the, the alarm sounding. We can clear those codes. So that way we don't have to see that. All right, so that's cleared. And I think it automatically clears over here if you wait long enough. 
Now, when we want to turn the AC outlets on or off, we do it from the master unit. You'll see that that's off and this is off. So all I got to do is hit this one and turn it on and both of them turn on. So we'll have this one turned on and that one turned on. And there's still one more thing that we need to do before we can get this plugged in and do it safely. Now we need to set this to charge at 50 amps. And to do that, you'll hit settings. Next one time, you'll come down to current settings, or your max current settings. You'll hit that. You gotta go into advanced mode. There's a disclaimer that you have to read. Then you're gonna have to obtain a password from Blue Eddy. You gotta reach out to the customer service. I can't give you that code. But once you get the code put in, it's gonna look just like this here. So you can set it to 10 amps, 20 amps, 30 amps, 40 amps, 50 amps, or user defined. But if you click that, you can only go to a maximum of 50 amps. So for me, I want to go to 50 amps and set it, and we're already good to go. Next, we have to come over to the other unit, do the same thing. Next, current settings, advanced, yes. Put in a passcode and then make sure that you have that one set at 50 amps as well. Then we'll go back and we are now safe to go plug the 50 amp plug in. And because our 50 amp plug is being fed directly from the main service panel, we need to turn this 50 amp breaker on to get power down to the plug and into the units. You'll probably hear some clicking going on but then we got some grid charging happen here and grid charging happening over here. But we got 3000 watts here and 1500 watts here. Because there's an imbalance, it's automatically gonna charge which one that it thinks it should be um, putting the most power to. So I did wanna point that out because when I first did this, I thought something was wrong because they weren't charging at the same rate. That's because the state of charge is off. It's not 100% accurate state of charge because we've got 6% over here and 5% over here. we got a, a much stronger charge happening on this side than we do this side at the current moment. But we are charging at around, uh, say, 4,700 watts, 4,800 watts. We're at 1,550 there and 3,200 watts over there. So around 4,700 watts is being uh, brought in to charge these units at 50 amps. Now that we have the 50 amp connected to the grid to charge it, what happens when we don't have grid power and we need to charge it from solar? Now you can charge this unit up with two different arrays on this inverter and then two on this inverter, making it four different arrays, giving you the ability to really max out some solar input between the two. I've got a small array for these two units. I set up on four 400 watt Aptos solar panels. And currently, I'm just using the 30 amp outlet to power my shop. So I just plug this in, the AC's on. I go over to the transfer switch and then click it over. And then if I come back around, you'll see that we're using some power. So 500 and some watts right there. And because I have it plugged into the front of that, this one's not showing it, even though this is the master, right? But I can't turn that off without turning this off. So if I try to turn it off, and that's why I like putting it into the slave. So if I try to turn it off, it won't let me turn it off. The only way to turn that off now is to come back over to the master and turn it off, which will turn off all my lights and all that. But I did want to show you, if you put this into the slave, you wouldn't be able to turn off the AC outputs without coming over to the master to do that. And I just wanted to make this video today to share with you guys the differences in charging that you can get with the AC500. You can get it from 10 amps all the way up to 50 amps if you're using the grid to charge it. You can do that from a solar system if you only have one array or if you have four arrays, uh, you can charge this up and do it fast. Hopefully I was able to provide you with some type of information that you found helpful. And if you did, smash the thumbs up button. It really does help me out a lot. Hope to catch you in my next video.